Luke chapter 2, starting with verse 10. Let's read together. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Can we read that one more time? Come on, let's declare it all together. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the the people. Father, I pray an anointing upon this word and anointing upon our ears to hear, our hearts to receive. And Lord, as we celebrate the birth, your birth, as we celebrate the birth of our salvation, the birth of our hope, the birth of reconciliation, Lord, we thank you for that. And Lord, we just rejoice in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, amen and amen. You may be seated. The title of my message this morning, if you're taking notes, is great joy. Great joy. Come on, somebody look at your neighbor and say, great joy. The passage there, the angels declare that there would be good news and great joy. Coming up to this season, I'm, I'm reminded of a, a very interesting situation that happened to me. My, um, my cousins and my family uh, from all over the world were at our house and when I was growing up we lived on the West Maui mountains and the West Maui mountains have little trails and hiking paths and so we had this brilliant idea hey all the family is here let's go on a hike so we all decided to go on this hike and the girls were trying to outdo the boys of who could go higher up the mountain and you know different trails and sliding down hills and it was me and my cousin Matt and we're together and we're just kind of hanging out having a good time and uh, trying to be men. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> chopping down trees that didn't do anything to anybody. You know, they didn't deserve to be chopped down, but we chopped them down anyways just to show that tree who was boss. And just, just getting crazy. And, but the problem was it started getting dark and we got lost. So it's me and my cousin Matt and we're lost. And then there's the girls and they're lost. And everybody's lost and we're on two different hills. And so, you know, here I was, the young adventurer, and I had this brilliant idea. There is this one hill that, uh, you know, I I thought, well, I'll climb down it and see if we can get to that trail that will lead to the other hill and we can meet up with the girls and we'll be okay. Well, as I'm heading down this hill, I didn't realize it was all loose loose dirt and, and, and just gravel. It was horrible. And I take one slip and I start sliding probably a good 50 feet down the hill. And I'm sliding and sliding, I'm like, oh, it's going, oh, you know, and I'm hitting everything. Oh, oh, and and uh, so one of, the, one of the problems is I get to the end of this thing and I grab onto a tree and probably a good 20 feet, a little bit lower would be a, a cliff that would drop off probably another 30 feet. So it's one of those like Indiana Jones stories, you know, that every so often I pull out, you know, and, but, but it was really interesting because my cousin had this rope and he drops the rope down to me and I'm climbing up the rope and, you know, and the whole time I'm doing this, I'm, I'm hearing the Indiana Jones theme song in my head and it's awesome. And, you know, and now I have a story to share and it's just incredible. Well, we ended up finding the girls, but what was difficult is that we had, we had gone over so many hills and valleys that we were about four hills away from our house. But the problem is we just got lost. We were lost. We couldn't find our way, and it was dark. It was very, very, very dark, and we were so brilliant that we didn't bring flashlights, and um, that's how smart we were. And I remember, I remember being in this moment of panic. I remember being in this moment where I felt hopeless. Um, I really, I mean, it was, it was a scary, scary moment. And probably one of the most amazing sounds I'd ever heard in my life. And I still remember what it sounded like when I heard my mom screaming my name. <laughs> I heard my mom screaming my name. And and hopelessness turning into hope. 
despair turning into joy and gladness. You know, it's very interesting, this story here, if I can give you kind of what was happening, the condition of the moment. Here was Jesus, and he was born in the midst of really captivity, that the people of Israel were under the oppressive rule of the Roman government. As a matter of fact, Jesus was born. The reason why they had gone to Bethlehem is because they had to pay taxes to the Roman government. It was the time of census. And really, that, that time of census was the way that the Roman government would kind of show forth their power to the people of Israel. They were in captivity. And here comes Jesus in the moment, in the midst of their captivity, as a sign of freedom. But you see, it wouldn't be freedom from the tyranny of the Roman government. It would be freedom from the devil. Freedom from sin. And it was quite amazing because you have to realize that in this passage of Luke chapter 2, there are two things that are said that I really believe need to shift the way we live and shift our thinking. And it's this, number one, the angels of the Lord said, I bring what? Good news. Friends, there's a good news and that good news is no longer are we under the oppressive rule of the devil, of the enemy. No longer are we bound by sin, but we are set free that Jesus came to bring us freedom. That those who were bound, those who are in bondage and captivity to the sins of your life, to the addictions of your life, Jesus came and he says, I set you free with my power. You're no longer bound by those things. You're no longer labeled by those things. It's no longer part of who you are and Jesus set us free from the oppressive rule of the devil in the midst of our captivity but what's amazing is not only do the angels declare of the good news that was to come but the great joy that would be ours the great joy This morning, I want to deal with three things that I truly believe we receive from the Lord as believers. We have something that no other person in this world has because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. And it is a joy that comes only from Him. For those who are here on a Sunday night, we've been doing a series. And I, I talked about how God's love is living proof. The title of the message is Living Proof and how God's love is living proof of Jesus' existence and the reality of who He is. This love that exists that's beyond just our natural love. And one thing I want you to understand this morning is that there is a joy that exists beyond just your natural ability to conjure up some type of joy in the midst of a circumstance. A joy that exists that even when nothing's going right, you can still have peace. You can still have comfort and joy. See, many of us, and I don't know about you, maybe I'm the only person here that, that I, I have a tendency to be bound by my circumstances in my expression of joy. See, joy is more than just an emotion. Many of you know that joy is more than emotion. As a matter of fact, what defines joy is that joy is an expression. So you can be happy. Happy is more of an emotion, but joy is an, an expression. Like if I was to come to you and I'd be like, I have so much joy. <laughs> right? You look at my Eeyore and say, I don't think so, yo. <laughs> right? <laughs> but if I got all Winnie the Pooh and I'm like, oh, it's a, <laughs> I'm oh so happy, honey. <laughs> right? That's joy. See, joy is expressed. And what's so incredible is that we understand that the love and the peace and the joy of God is so tangible, it's so real, that it's more than just an emotion we feel, it's something we actually express, it's something that actually comes out of us. And the reality of the joy of God, see the joy of the Lord is real. If I can get you to believe that, that there's a joy that exists straight from the throne of God, and it is a joy that is pure. It is a joy that is not dependent upon what happens in this world or what happens in your life. 
It's a joy that supersedes all of that. It goes way beyond. Because some of you, how is it that some of you can be in a season of oppression or feel like you're in bondage in your life right now, but yet you can still have joy? How can that declaration come? Because there's a tangible joy. As we look at a passage in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. A joy unspeakable and full of glory. Such incredible, tangible joy. I believe that joy is an expression of the reality of Christ. Because it's this, it's no, we know that even though our outward body may be perishing, even though we know that these worldly circumstances at time may seem like too much for us to bear, we have a confidence. We have a confidence that Jesus is real. And the reality of Christ is seen in a knowing that even though we die, we shall live. That even knowing that situations come against us, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. That there is nothing on this planet that is greater than the love, that is greater than the joy that Christ gives us. His joy is tangible. If I was to look at someone that was parched, Anyone here ever been extremely thirsty? I'm talking about like, I feel like I'm going to die thirsty, right? You ever been there? And I, was to, and I was to sit a glass of water in front of you, and you look at that glass of water almost in disdain going, I don't want that water. I said, no, drink the water. Here, this is for you. It's clean. It's pure. Here you go. I don't want it. Well, why not? Because I don't want it. But you're thirsty. You're going to die if you don't drink it. I don't want it. Now, every single one of us would know that we would have permission to slap the daylights out of that person and say, drink the water, right? Hello, drink the water. You're going to die. What you need is water, right? And all of us would say, man, that guy is ridiculous. What are you doing? Now, this is, this is what's unique to me. If we know for a fact that there is a joy that exists, a joy unspeakable and full of glory, a real joy, a joy that surpasses all things. A joy that we can, now you ready for this? A joy that we can tap into no matter how we feel or no matter what's going on around us, that we can have that joy and obtain that joy. Wouldn't you, in the moments of your depression, in the moments of your weakness, in the moments of your sickness, in the moments of all hell breaking loose in your life, just like that person who was parched and thirsty or dehydrated, wouldn't you go to that water and soak up that water? Right? If you need some joy, I want every single one of you to understand this. That there's a joy that exists. And I want, you to, I want you to create a habit in your life. That whatever goes on around you, you go to joy. Go to joy. How do we do that? We understand and know that the Bible says that He fills us with joy in His presence. In His presence... In God's presence, there is what? Fullness of joy. There is fullness of joy in his presence. Now, isn't it interesting, isn't it unique that the Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, right? Isn't that incredible? So a part of who he is, the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, is he is joy. And he has the fullness of joy. So your joy resides in the Holy Spirit. Your joy resides in His presence. Now, if you all knew that your water resided in the refrigerator, <laughs> hey, I, I ain't going to lie. There's some mornings, now the ushers are going to be mad at me, and I love you, ushers, you're incredible. But there are some mornings where they, they leave a bucket up here in the front, and I come to early morning prayer meeting, and the water's looking at me, and I just feel free. I just go ahead and I get some, because it's there. Just drink the water. Now they're going, whoa, we thought the rats did it. We, you know, it was our pastor taking the water. Now they're going to start hiding the water from me. 
It's okay, though. I give you permission. It's okay. If you knew that it was readily available, wouldn't you go to the source? See, if there's anything I can convince you of this morning is that there's a source of joy. His name is Christ. The reality of the person of the Holy Spirit and there is a source of joy and that you can go to that source and get joy any time you want. You can get joy any time you want. Psalm 16, 11. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Now the psalmist here is talking about a relationship with God that he gives you joy. You know, I've never gone into the presence of God and left his presence feeling depressed. I just, for some reason, it just doesn't happen. Why? Because depression doesn't exist in his presence. He doesn't have depression. It's not a part of his person. Right? I've never left the presence of God having fear. Paul tells Timothy, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. See, he doesn't produce that. So if you're in his presence, you're not going to have fear. You're going to have joy. Faith is going to arise in you. If I can create an appetite within you this morning that when depression is hitting you, when fear is hitting you, when, when all these things are coming against you, that there is a source of joy. His name is Jesus Christ. And you can find it in his presence. If there's anything that I can convince you of, it's to go to the source of joy that becomes your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Go to his presence. Go to his word. Shut everything off. If you're finding yourself getting depressed, turn off the news. Come on. If you're finding yourself getting depressed, get off the phone. Get outside your... Now, now look. Now, hold on. I got I to be transparent with you. Now, one thing you have to understand about being a preacher is that all week long, I had to live out this sermon. Everybody wants to be a preacher until you got to live out the sermon. Oh, yeah. So here I was, and I knew exactly what my sermon was going to be. And all of a sudden, I get a phone call. And in that phone call, it wasn't a very nice phone call. As a matter of fact, there were some words exchanged. Oh, you don't want to, you don't want, no, no, no. Oh, you don't want to get like that with me. You want to talk about, as a matter of fact, can I just tell you right now? I brought it. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about? You ever been on one of those conversations like, oh yeah, yeah, what? Yeah, right, uh-huh. Oh yeah, I'm telling you right now, you're going to get it. Oh yeah, you're going to get it. No, you're going to get it. And you, I just, I just broke that person down on the phone. Right. When I hung up that phone, I was like, oh, yeah, bye-bye. Boom, boom, drop the phone. <laughs> I felt justified in my cause. I felt justified in my words. And I felt good. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody been there before? Right. Right. Showed them who was boss. The problem was, I wasn't feeling too good inside. I said what I felt like I wanted to say, but I wasn't feeling good, and it was stirring up inside of me. And the truth of the matter, it was affecting my joy. My wife would be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Nothing. It's Christmas. And you're supposed to be happy. This is my happy face. <laughs> right? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, I was like, do I need to lay hands on you? Yes, please. I'm sorry. That was inappropriate. So 
so I'm, I'm, everything inside of me is like, I felt justified, but, but I didn't feel right. And it was like robbing my joy. I don't, there have been moments in my life where there's these joy suckers. You know what I'm talking about? They're like joy parasites and they, they suck all the joy out of everything. Like you could be having a really good time and then like, you're like, oh man, you leave a situation. You could be in a conversation. All of a sudden they bring up something that you don't want to talk about. And you're like, why did you bring up that conversation? I didn't need to talk about the end times. I didn't really give a rip about that. I wanted to talk about Jesus and now you got to talk about the rapture and eternal damnation. Anybody in here have people in your life that the conversation always turns to hell? You guys know what I'm talking about? Anybody, ha you have somebody like that in your life? Like you could be talking about butterflies and angels and birds and all of a sudden, hell! Like, okay. Back to the story. So what happens is I'm like, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling justified, but the problem is I had no joy. And my, Joy sucker. All right, here we go. <laughs> so, stop it. Stop it. So what ends up happening is my wife's like, get some joy. And I knew that I had to have some joy, but I didn't want joy because I actually liked the way I felt. I really enjoyed feeling justified. And the worst part is I would much rather stay in my pride than walk in joy. And I was looking at joy going, joy is right there. I can easily step into joy. Why? Because joy's already been provided for me. There's a source that I know I can go to for some joy, but I'd rather stay detached from that source because I'd rather feel experience and be driven by my pride than get me some joy. I'd rather, be, I'd rather be driven by fear than get me some joy. I'd rather be driven by anger than get me some joy. You guys with me? And so we make a conscious, I, I made, I, I, the most amazing pastor, I. I'm telling you, I'm so anointed. There's times I just lay hands on myself and fall out myself. You know what I'm talking I'm joking. I'm joking. Normally, I do that if I'm really tired and my wife's like, can you take out the trash? Oh, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Anyways. Look, I have struggles. I'm just being real with you. I was locked. Listen, because of my conscious decisions, I was locked in that place. Making a decision, I'd rather stay in my misery, my pain, my pride, my issues, my anger, my bitterness, than give me some joy. And the worst thing is, I knew what it took to get joy. <laughs> and I knew the conversation I'd have to have. Because even though I was justified, the situation had to be fixed in order for me to get joy. And so I had to call him on the phone and be like, you remember that conversation that I was 100% right about? <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say, I promise. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Wanted to. I didn't say it. Hi. Hey, what's going on? What? How you doing? What's going on? Wait a second. Why is there no frustration in your voice? Why am I sitting here angry, frustrated, irritated, and you're okay? This is not right! Anybody ever have those conversations before? You call someone to ask for forgiveness or tell them that you forgive them, and they're okay. What are you doing okay? You're not supposed to be okay. You're supposed to be hating life like I am right now. You're not supposed to be sleeping at night. You're supposed to be exhausted because you're wearing yourself out thinking about how horrible I am every day. And they got joy. You're not allowed to have joy. If I'm going to be miserable, you're going to be miserable. I know none of you ever think that way. And so here I'm on the conversation. You know what I had to do? I had to repent. 
I had to repent. I had to ask for forgiveness. I had to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I had to ask them to forgive me for my attitude. And you know what was really cool? It was almost like this immediate thing came on me. It's just like a switch. Someone flipped the switch, and I had a cup of coffee, but someone flipped the switch. <laughs> no, but I'm serious. I, it was almost like, it was almost instantaneous. I'm sorry for my attitude, please forgive me. And it's like I was ushered out of that thinking and immediately stepped into joy. The battle, no, no, this is what's hard, is the battle for joy is in our mind. It's in our spirit and we're battling, we're battling constantly, but we can make a conscious decision to obtain, to take hold of joy. Why? It's there. It already exists and it's tangible. We got to get to his presence. We got to get outside of our own thinking, outside of ourselves, outside of our selfishness and pride. And I got to just, it's right there. Just step in. Just step in. Some of you need to turn off your country music. Right? You know the country music that, that helps you with your depression? You guys know what I'm talking about? It actually encourages your depression. How horrible is life? How horrible the world is. Right? My baby left me two times, three times, four. She went out the door. <laughs> Come on. And we like, we listen to that and it feeds our depression. And we know that if we just open up the Bible, it'll feed our joy. We know that if we just turn on some worship music, it'll fuel that joy. We know if we just get into his presence, we can get us some joy. See, what I'm trying to get you to understand is you can make a choice to have joy. Joy is yours. You got to make a decision. Say, I want some joy. And you got to go after it. Get in his presence. For in his presence is fullness of joy. And this is what I love about that word fullness. It means that he fills you up completely with joy. That means it's supernatural. That means it takes over other, other areas of your life. That, you, know, you say, well, pastor, I'm, not, I'm just not a very joyous person. I'm just not joyful. Why not? Don't use it as an excuse, friends. Look, he's a joyful person. And if he's in you, guess what will come out of you? Joy. His joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. So we understand this morning that there is a real joy. There's a joy that is real, that is tangible, that you can obtain, that you can live in, that can fill up your life. There's a joy that fills. Your life can be filled to overflowing with joy. But can I just make this statement? Everybody ever heard those, that phrase, you got to fake it till you make it? Can I just tell you right now? There are moments where I'm in that back office and I don't want to see any of you. <laughs> All I want to see is my pillow. I want to sleep. I'm tired. Or I'm irritated because my kids ate my cookies. <laughs> I felt like Santa today. Can I tell you I felt like Santa today? I was in Kaneohe and they left me with a bunch of cookies and milk. I'm like, yes! I'm driving from Kaneohe to New Valley like, that's what I'm talking about. This is how Santa must feel. <laughs> but you know what's interesting is this. We always say this. Well, you know, Pastor, I just want to be real. I don't want to fake it. I don't, want to, I don't want to fake it, Pastor. If I'm feeling sad, if I'm feeling miserable, I'm going to feel miserable because I don't want to fake it. Look, I'm not, never ever in this church are we ever going to ask people to fake anything. I don't fake things. I don't ask you to fake things. But I am a firm believer that there are moments in my life when I don't want to be out here. There are moments in life where I don't want to talk to anybody because I just, I don't, I, I, I'm not there. You know what I have to do is I have to faith it. 
You see, joy is a matter of the Holy Spirit. Joy is a faith thing. Joy is a faith thing. I'm not asking you to come up here like, hi everybody, I'm so happy. And inside you're going, I hate life. <laughs> I'm not asking you to do that. But this is what I believe. I believe that inside of you, if you can faith joy and say, you know what? I know, I know every devil in hell wants me to be depressed and wants me to be oppressed. I had to, you know what I had to do just a few days ago is I had to faith some joy. My wife's telling me, baby, you better get your act together. <laughs> right? And I could get out there and I could, I could just fake it. But the thing was this, I knew what I had to do is I had to faith my joy. I mean, there's times where you just have to say, you know what, I'm going to get me some joy. It doesn't matter how I feel and it doesn't matter what the circumstances say. I'm going to get me some joy. And one of the ways I do that is I just start stepping in it. I'm going to put a smile on my face, even though, even though it may be hard to smile right now. I'm going to put a smile on my face and I'm going to faith this joy. I'm going to faith this joy. Joy, you're going to come forth because this is what I know. My healing comes forth through faith. My salvation comes forth through faith. My deliverance comes forth through faith. So I'm telling you, I'm going to be determined because my faith is going to produce joy. My joy is going to come through faith. So instead of walking around all depressed, Jesus, you paid for my joy. You supplied my joy. And the way I take hold of that joy is I just start stepping out in it in faith because I know what you provided for me. Everybody say, faith some joy. Let me close with this. <laughs> no, no, some more. I love it. You guys are awesome. I love you guys. Everybody say, a joy that's real. A joy that fills. Listen to this one. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Proverbs 17, verse 22. A cheerful heart is good medicine. But a crushed spirit dries up the bones. In Psalm 30... Chapter 11, chapter 30, verse 11 says, You turn my wailing into dancing. You turn my wailing into dancing. You removed, now this is, this is profound, listen to this. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Now this, as I, as I read that, as I read these two passages, I realized something. That not only... Is there joy that's real? There's a joy that exists that is tangible. It's the joy of the Lord. And I'm going to go to that source to take hold of that tangible joy. Not only is there a joy that fills, he fills me up completely and overflowing, but there's also a joy that heals. That joy heals. That just as depression dries up the bones, <laughs> joy that releases that gladness, that releases healing. That joy heals. Many of us, some of the sicknesses and the diseases that we have are because of our depression. But can you imagine the healing that you would have if you had some joy? That joy could bring healing into your marriage. That joy could bring healing into your body. That joy could bring healing. But this is what's incredible. As you look at Psalm, if you look at Psalm chapter 30, verse 11, where it says, He removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Can I tell you how incredible this is? And let me just give you a history of this. Now, you have to realize in those times within the Bible, clothing meant something. We, we know that shepherds, poor people, the, the poorest of the poor would wear sackcloth. 
And there's positions of what royalty would wear, what the military would wear. And it's not like today where we can just wear a t-shirt and, you know, Bill Gates walks around with, you know, khakis and a t-shirt. One of the wealthiest people on the planet is we understand that, that there is position and your clothing identified your position. Now, this is what's incredible. Is that the psalmist says, look, you took off my sackcloth. You removed my sackcloth, that, that place of humility, that place of desperation, that place of sorrow and poverty, that thing that identified me. Listen, that thing that was so attached to me, it identified me. It showed everybody who I was. You took off my sackcloth and you clothed me with joy. Now, I, I want to go deeper than this because I don't want us to think that all I'm saying is that he gives us joy and he just, hey, here's joy. This is what the psalmist says. He says, you, you took off that thing which defined me, the sackcloth, which defined my oppression, my depression, my brokenness, my poverty. You took that off and you now clothe me. Are you ready for this? You defined me, not as something is joy that I have, but joy that I am. The psalmist had a revelation, is God doesn't just give me joy, he makes me joy. Joy now becomes who I am. Joy is not just something I have. Friends, listen to me. Because of who Christ is and Christ came, joy is not just something he gives us, something which is obtained here and there when we need it or when we don't need it or when we just need to preach or something and people to think we're happy. Joy defines us. Joy is who we are. As a matter of fact, you can from this point on move from a place the place of depression, the place of fear and brokenness. Say, I'm no longer broken. I am joy. It's who I am. It's not something I have every so often. It's not just something I express every so often. I am joy. He clothed you. See, you have to understand something. The Bible says that Christ clothed us with righteousness. You know what that means? You are righteous. Wow. Yes. Yes. Clothing is your identity. Joy is now your identity. You are joy. When you walk into a room, you don't bring the joy. You are the joy. You know what I'm talking about? It's not just something you have temporarily. You wake up with it if you need it. Go to bed. When you go to bed, oh no, no more joy. No, you are joy. Because now joy is inside of you. That's why we understand that it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. What? What? How is that? Because I am joy. It has become my identity. It has marked me. It is who I am now. So now I have a different way of functioning because I don't just have joy every so often. Because I am joy, I function different. Because I am joy, I see things different. Because I am joy, I talk different. See, when it becomes your identity, instead of just something that you have every so often, when it becomes your identity, it changes everything about you. It changes how you respond to things. And I had to recognize the other day, I was not functioning in the identity which Christ paid for. I was given into a lie that depression, frustration, bitterness was my identity. It marked my life. But now when I step out of that, I say, wait a second. I have no business acting like this. This isn't who I am. I am joy. You know what's amazing? Is when joy is just something you have, when things around you go crazy and all hell breaks loose, guess what? <laughs> it's easy. It's easy for that situation to overwhelm you. Why? Because all you have is joy. But when you are joy, it doesn't the world around you can fall apart. It won't affect you because you are joy. It's my identity. 
It's who I am. When everybody else is cussing, going crazy, hating life, I'm loving life. Why? I am joy. It's not just something I have that I use every so often. It's who I am. What's incredible is that your life could have been marked by hurt and brokenness, anger, bitterness, whatever it might be. And those things that robbed you of joy, those things were the things that marked your life. But because of Christ, because of what he came to do to give you a tangible joy, to fill you with that joy, it heals you because it changes who you are. You don't have to be depressed anymore. Friends, you don't have to be angry anymore. It's not who you are. You are joy. And maybe this morning, <laughs> you're like I was a couple days ago, and you need somebody to lay hands on you. <laughs> Pray for you. Maybe, maybe this morning you say, Pastor, I've been ignoring the source. And I know I've got to go get me some joy. I've got to faith that joy into existence. Whatever it may be, friends, this morning, I want to pray for you. Because it's God's desire that you walk in joy. Yes. It's God's desire that you are joy. And that joy is yours.